Well, Arts and Adventure Summit's the Airwaves. This is the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show with Oberndorfer and Long. I am our Brandon Long, along with... Todd Oberndorfer. We are your hosts for the greatest, greatest Arts and Adventure podcast in Ogden. So, uh, it's a high bar. Set the bar. It's a high bar. Uh, we have our guests this week. We have a full trailer, a trailer full of men, uh, Corey Mon, yeah. where's this headed? <laughs> Shane Osgathorpe and Scott Rogers in the trailer, and we will be talking about man stuff. Man yes. stuff. <laughs> Why am I here? Why am I stuck in this corner? I gotta get out of here. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Was it quick releases? Yeah. Quick releases. Yeah. Quick releases. Yeah. Yeah. This is the quick release episode of the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show. Corey Mon, um, give us your quick release story, I guess. <laughs> I mean, <that's, laughs> I don't want to start with that. Uh, really? This is, wow. Maybe what a, a way quick to start. Introduction yeah, first. Yeah. We don't need to massage into anything, yeah. all right? We go right into the- It's the quick release. Yeah, right, right yeah. in the details here. Oh my goodness. We know oh. there's a very good chance you're going to turn this off after three minutes. So we got three minutes. Yeah, we got, we got less than three minutes. We got 30 seconds to impress. Ready? <laughs> quick release. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, seven, uh, eight, <laughs> eight, nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that was easy. <laughs> well, let's set the stage, I guess, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These two here on the side, Shane Osgathorpe, Scott Rod. I actually invited Scott, and he's like, I, I can't do it alone. I got to invite backup. So I don't know why you were scared, Scott. To I just wasn't sure what there, I, but... I was like. What What hat am I wearing? Yeah. Well. And then you were like, I don't know. No, it doesn't matter. It's just a hat. Yeah, it's, it's, just... it's it's actually a stocking. Because you do so many cap. things. Yeah. That it doesn't matter. So, yeah, it is like, a knit stocking. But if you um, pack the video up, you'll see that I actually looked up to see which hat he Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you never know. So, uh, Scott, professor uh, by day. Yeah. We don't need to talk about yeah. that part. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could. <laughs> Nobody wants we'll to talk about it. Editor, we'll musician by night. There we go. That's there we go. Yeah. There we That's go. the sexy <laughs> stuff right There's there. There's the artsy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Artsy shit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, and partnered with the guy in the corner. Nobody puts Shane in a corner. Apparently yeah. they do. Yeah. But yeah, until, yeah. Today, until today, until uh, today, they have a little band with, with the third member that is maybe, maybe after tonight will be permanently in the band, Carrie Myers. Uh, <laughs> Called the proper way. So if you haven't heard of the proper way, they they get hauled out to do. Okay, so here's a here's a legit question. Mm. Legit question. Um, let's just say, for instance, um, people with money want to hire you for, mm -hmm. and and then they pay you a lot of money mm -hmm. to go do these band performances right but then you do a free show in Ogden and no one shows. Like, what is why? What is that about Ogden that? It's hard to get people to to cheap fifteen dollar cover gigs or whatever, but yet you can get paid to go say out of state, but a lot of money for gigs. Mm -hmm. That's a decent question, I guess. Yeah, I don't understand it. You don't understand. You don't get it. I don't. I mean, I don't get it. So that's why I'm asking. Like, are we? Are we? Is there? Is there too much proper in Ogden? I don't think that's it. By the way, I just don't know. I mean, we, are, are we just not? Are we just not conditioned to pay fifteen bucks to go see live shows in Ogden? Like, what's the story? I think some of it's Ogden's just a working class town. Um, yeah, you can move that. I think closer. that's I think that's part of it, uh, but and I also think that like we're kind of we're not we're not Ogden's vibe. Yeah. <laughs> like, How are you not Ogden's vibe? Because we're you Park City's Ogden. vibe, and we're Jackson's vibe, <laughs> and we're Grand Lake Colorado's vibe. And Keep talking. I'm gonna adjust that camera. And helper loves us. Helper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not Ogden. Big and helper. Yeah. Vernal. We're huge and helper. Oh man, <laughs> Vernal loves us, and we love Vernal, and we love Helper. No, I, th I think that this this town's been spoiled by a lot of really good musicians for a long time. And I think people take it for granted. It's why yeah. you don't see a Danny Weldon play here anymore because he can pack him in at the montage and make thousands. Where he could make you know tens in tips here to an empty house. You tens know? of dollars. Tens of dollars. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's it's what's the old biblical phrase? A prophet is reviled in his own country. I think mm. I think a musician is just kind of taken for granted at his own town, and they're like, yeah, we'll just catch him next time. Until you just the musician's like, well, I'm not going to play here next time because it's no no fun, you yeah. know. So are so you calling say, yourself a prophet? No, I'm calling myself a musician that's <laughs> oh, taken for granted in his own town. I think some of it's age. I think some of it's like age too. There we go. There's Scott. Hey, thanks. He looks good. Yeah. Make sure right. get Scott. He's I think some of it's age too. Like um, <clears throat> like you're too old. Yeah. No, yeah. And our BS. crowd is too. No, really. Like, yeah. For like real. We, 
the 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 start times are way too late. Oh yeah, here. man. Like, we we want to be in bed by the time they're starting, and so we want to be done by the time they're. This you know. whole idea of starting at like like ten o'clock, I'm like that, that's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. So you're, are you aging out of the rock and roll scene here? <laughs> What's so there? So it there's a life cycle to this, right? I mean, like when you're twenty something. You've got all your friends, and all your friends come out to go hear your band or whatever. And Corey can attest to this, I'm sure. Like Corey's 25. All, all your friends go out to hear your band, and you pack the house. But none of your friends have any money. Yeah. So the you know the five dollar cover that they paid to get in is all they had, and they and they sit there and they drink like nothing but water for the rest of the night from the bar, and the bar gets pissed <laughs> off, right? And then then what happens is that those friends all start to have kids, and they stop coming to shows. And then you have like a 20 year lag where those kids have to age out and like the kids have to be old enough for the parents to go out to bars and stuff to go hear the older people mm -hmm. play anymore. And now, like, like I think at this point, we're just like at the point where like the people our age are just not, I'm, like, I'm not going out there. Okay, let me challenge your assertion. Um, we we're part of Locals Rock and there's a lot of um, it's great talent. In mm -hmm. fact, this last one was, I mean, phenomenal bands. Uh, younger bands too. Die Shiny and Zaza's band. What's uh, Doom, Doom Cupcake. Cupcake? Doom Cupcake. I mean, Die Shiny. Sh I mean, as a '90s alternative fan, '80s '90s alternative fan, they fit right in that little pocket where I'm like, these they should be famous. Like they're so good. Doom Cupcake is. A, they got this. They have a cool vibe going too. I dig them. They're more. They're oh, more yeah. rock. They're oh, more. I dig them. Oh, we're not saying there's not an awesome music the, scene. Like, we're just saying our place in it is. Yeah, not we're, where, we're, we're, I'm with you, but yeah. guess what? That that was a lightly attended show, and that's my question. Oh. So that challenges your assertion. You're too old because mm. they are very young and with it. But people didn't pay 15 bucks to come see these guys. I, 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 Shane, I, that's where you get back to Shane's point about like, you know, people are spoiled. Mm. We'll, we'll to, catch them next time. Yeah. You know? So I think. Oh, really? Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. prevailing mentality. Is like, mm. oh, we don't have to go tonight. I'm tired tonight, but we'll catch him next time. Corey, I that... used to do that with Danny Weldon. I'd see him a lot, but there was nights I'm like, I'd wanted to go see him. Like, oh, I'll just catch him next time. Then all of a sudden, you realize, like, I got to go to Park City now if I want to see mm -hmm. him play anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Corey, what's is that the same in Salt Lake or Salt Lake just big enough that you, we don't really experience? Uh, you don't experience that in Salt Lake. It's different. It's a little bit different in yeah. Salt Lake. Uh, Corey Mon, musician. Woo, woo. Full, full yeah. time? Uh, no, no, not full time. I'm a I'm a full time dad. That requires full time dad. Yeah. Fi requires financial answer. stability. That's a good answer. <laughs> full time dad. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done the full time music thing a handful of times in my life, but uh, I'm not uh, just not today. No, yeah, not okay. Today. Um, yeah, it's different in Salt Lake City, mm. uh, it, but it it still becomes uh, maybe uh, situational. Uh, it, always, uh, mm. you know, what do you have? What what is the show? You know, is it just you playing? Is it just you playing at a at, at a bar, you know, or, or, or are you at a listening venue? It really depends on, you know, the, the nature of the event that you're, you're putting on. But I would say pound for pound, uh, as far as uh, what I've experienced here versus uh, Salt Lake City, uh, yeah, there's a difference. There's, yeah. there's a bit of a difference as far as attendance, appreciation, yeah. Yeah, and you're not, I guess you're not in Helper every day, so they love yeah, you. Yeah, there, yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, the, yeah. it seems like the musicians in Salt Lake will come out to support other musicians. I, there, there's a lot of that. And there's definitely a lot of that. And, mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's one of the things that weirds me out. Like, I remember when Twilight first started, and uh, and somebody was complaining that, that none of the other. I barely acts. remember the first Twilight. That's was, the, the Sparkly Vampire. Yeah, it was like one of the first, first, <laughs> first, first or second Sparkly Twilight. Sparkly Vampire. And, <laughs> and, there was a, and there was a local musician who was complaining that the, the opening acts weren't local. And I was like, man, the local musicians don't even go out to hear one another. Like, mm. But these kids from Provo... We'll we'll drive all the way up here yeah. to go here, yeah. you know, and it's just it's just a different scene. Well, okay, so a smaller town, Logan, has a has a great scene, scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they all show up. Is it because they all show up for each other? You think? Yeah. yeah. Is there too much? So we're too competitive in Ogden. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to do. Sometimes it's a venue. They to speak ill of any of the venues, but maybe there ha there hasn't been the right communal venue. I don't know. You know, I think uh, maybe what's trying to happen here at the Monarch is is, is, is a little bit of that. Um, but, um, for instance, I came from the Provo scene originally. Um, Good scene. Yeah, it's a great great little scene. And and the thing that brought it together was Valor. was the birth of Valor. Yeah. yeah, and Corey Fox. And, you know, like, it, it, was, it was very much... Um, the, the, you know, sure, there's there's competition in any any scene, you know, and and but at some point in time, you kind of become you know each other's uh, 
you, you know, one venue starts it and you become each other's fans and, and you know, supporters in some ways. So I, I, maybe, you know. Well, I mean, we did lose a venue a few years back and that was really helping a lot of younger artists in this town and we've gone without for a long time. And Shane has mentioned in the past that's why Van Sessions is significant for these Absolutely. local local artists. So Absolutely. we're we're trying, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, keep fighting the good fight. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, so like you know, Logan's got Y Sound. Yep. And yep. and uh, uh, Provo's got Velour, and like there's just not a space like that. In, are those both all ages? Yes. Mm-hmm. There's just not an event space like that. Well, they're trying. There's a couple trying. Yeah. There's now, yeah. There's I mean I knew there's yeah. one there's there's the new one out at the at the BDO. Yep. Um, and there's a, one more. There's a heavy metal one. <clears throat> behind Macy's up here. Yeah, yeah, whatever that one's called. I can't remember. Yeah, and I mean, the kids will find one another, you know. Yeah. But, but a place like Velour or a place like Y Sound where, or, or as Ogden had Mojo's, um, where the kids can learn the craft and can, you know, hone their skills and all that kind of jazz, um, is just incredibly important. And like right now, where Ogden is, we're in this weird spot where the last generation of Mojo's kids have all just turned 21. So mm-hmm. it's your Kip Congers and your Josh Boyettes and all these guys. Um, and they're now able to play in the bars, which is great. And, and you know, and the same thing is happening where, like, their friends don't have any money. And they come, <laughs> they pack the house. Sure. You know, yeah. Sammy, Sammy packs the house and they all just drink Red Bull. Yeah. Um, you know, but... They smoke a lot. And they smoke a lot. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, but uh, but like the absence of a, a central hub like that. Mm-hmm. Like when I was in college, um, and I went to I, I should preface and this was this. a long time ago. It was a long time ago, and it was apparently only the case for a few years. Um, but when I was in college, there was an open mic night every Thursday night at this place called the Pub Down Under, and there would be two hundred people just sitting on the floor listening, dead quiet. Mm. I mean, just absolutely dead quiet, and it, it like. And it was like all of the best musicians in town would play this thing, mm. and this apparently only happened for a few years. Mm. Um, but without a without a, a hub to build this kind of scene around, and Mojo's was it for here. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, and right now, I mean, there's kind of like the Monarchs trying. Van Sessions is as close as we get, mm. but you guys can't do this every week. Well, God, we added that extra. <laughs> So you we're know, doing it twice a month, and it's, yeah. and it's I, I'm, a aware, lot, so, I'm aware. I'm aware yeah. because suddenly I get a lot more files to make. Yeah, which which <laughs> shout out to Scott Rogers because, and I'll tell this story again, and I've told it multiple times. Is the greatest insult I ever received was when someone came up to me and was like, "Oh man, ever since Scott was mixing, they sound good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mixed them before. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> but so the. <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I told you that. <laughs> you oh, know, I don't remember. That up. That's a good I, but it was funny because they were really honestly trying to give a compliment. You know, like, oh man. No, you got to give feedback. You got to yeah, get that good those, stuff. Those last episodes, yeah, since Scott's been mixing, they sound really good. You know, I think they were trying to compliment you. Meanwhile, I'm like, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> who, who is the schmo editing before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like on audition and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Like Scott actually knows. I, I I edit podcasts. I don't edit music. And yeah. so Scott actually knows what the hell he's doing. And so <laughs> they're super fun uh, to mix too. Because I never know what I'm gonna get. And like most of the time I'm not here. Mm. So like it, only recently I started telling Brandon I was like I need a picture of the stage because I mixed yeah, one. Yeah. I forget what it was. I mixed one and I had Visually, no, it's different. I had no idea. Yeah, when mixing for video is very different than just mixing for like in your ears. And uh, there was one that was mixed. I forget who it was. And I had no idea what was going on on the stage and I just guessed where people were. And I'm watching the video and in my right ear comes this instrument that on the screen is on the left side. Right and I'm side, like, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I know. I think I know who it was. I can't. Remember. It's it's it was jarring, like your brain just kind of goes like like I can't yeah. Process this. Yeah. All right. Well, then, how did you uh, the proper way get involved with this Corey Mon guy? Do you want to? Have you known? Any, to? Do you remember when you first quick release together? Or? I think <laughs> <laughs> we do. It was it was, was it was it was a very definitive moment in our <laughs> in our relationship. Okay. It was actually it was, it was actually on my birthday. <laughs> it was priceless. <laughs> 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 it was it was Corey's birthday present. To yeah, you. yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, how we Scott and I have known each. You kind of know each other, right? You 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 start this digital relationship mm. in, in regards to, like your 
you start seeing, oh, who played as I'm showing up to the garage to play, who played the proper or who played the last week? Oh, it's the proper way. You know, and you start seeing, especially when you play in the same kind of genre, right? So start popping up and okay. And so then you start communicating with each other and start, you know, following each other and, and becoming digital friends. So we knew of each other. We we were friends on, on ye olde Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and where Scott and I started really connecting is it popped up. I was living out in Florida for a little bit, playing yeah. music up and down the beaches. This was so so Scott's huge in Florida. Yeah, this Scott's so huge. <laughs> and Scott, I get tagged in a post with this mutual friend, uh, Helena, Helena Kletch, uh, and Scott goes, what in the and I was hell? like, what? Like, how do you two know, know each other? You know? And so uh, it was, yeah, and that's where we really started connecting and talking is just like, oh, well, Helena, I know her from, you know, the local scene here in Tampa, and we, you know, yeah, we got to- <laughs> How did like, you know her? The, so the proper way started in Tahoe, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the, the road. Whole, uh, yeah, so, and the whole deal is that my buddy of mine um, lives out in Tahoe, and- uh, before the proper way existed, he called me and he was like, "Hey, uh, do you want to come to California with us and do like a week of this this thing?" And I was like, "I was like, sure." He's like, "We're bringing a big crew of musicians from Tahoe out, and you can come out and like like basically what they did was they it was at one of those um, Folk Alliance uh, International um, conferences, and, the, and this was the Far West one." And so what they did... Everybody knows what that is, right? It's FAI. FAI, yeah. they're huge. I mean, these are massive. Um, they took the entire second floor of this hotel, turned every room into a performance venue, and you just walked from room to room to mm. room mm. listening to people play. And so you would play these like little 20-minute sets for like four hours, and you just rotate through. And Helena was one of the people that was brought out as part of this crew. And so that's how I knew Helena. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the proper, and then the same guy was like, Hey, can you come out and play in Tahoe? And I was like, yeah, sure. And that's how the mm-hmm. proper way gets started. Mm-hmm. So the proper way has got like deep roots. It was just you two. Like, yeah, it was just me and Shane, yeah. but we've got deep roots in Tahoe. Um, like that's, the, that's the origin story. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, but like Helena tagged Corey in a post and I was just like, what, what world, what is happening? Yeah. You know? So it was just really bizarre. And then Helena came out here to like, she wanted to. She's part of a. Um, her brother-in-law does a, a an Elton John tribute show. Rocket Man, the Rocket Man show, yeah, and it's yeah. like, and this is like. That's right. I remember that. Fully endorsed okay. by Elton. John. Oh, fully. Yeah. Fully like endorsed. apparently, right. Elton John has said that like if he comes back out of retirement, this is going to be his band. Wild. They are selling out like huge theaters all over the place, and Helena's one of the backup singers, and so her life is a series of one-way flights as she just flies from place to place to place, mm. and she had like a a four-day like gap between a job in Colorado and a job in like San Diego. And so she crashed at my house and we recorded a song. She, she wanted to record with us. And so we recorded a song with her and, and then she flew off and she's gone. And, yeah. and so like, but so like that's, so, I, mean, I was like, wait, Corey, we, how do we have this connection? That's really bizarre. Yeah. Um, World of music being small. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, like, well, yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, like it just, it's one of those things like everything gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you, yep. as you sort of climb the ladder, you know? Um, but, uh, and then Corey posted a, a video of a song of his, I guess it was, was it at the stateroom? Yeah. I was opening for Mark Broussard at the stateroom. Yeah. And then I just ended on this song of mine that I, I play rarely, but every once in a while it's this monster of like emotion. It's right? a banger. Yeah. And like, oh, I just, did you t- just use the banger word. <laughs> wow. It's you we'll talk about quick, that. quick yeah. release, man. quick release. Quick yeah. Release. yeah. Um, very quick release. So okay. like Corey posts this video and it just blew me away. And I just texted him and I was just like, Hey man, come on up come up to our studio let me record that and he was like okay so we arranged a date it happened to be my 50th birthday this is what i know about scott <laughs> is when he hears good music he wants to record it yeah which is you know, awesome is yeah awesome yeah. yeah and then you just in, invite people and now yeah. you got friends yeah, yeah. So. okay and Corey was like what do i owe you and i was like what are you talking about he was like he was like you recorded me i was like but i invited you i'm not gonna invite you up here and then charge you <laughs> he was like, and then I'm like, I'm sure let's do let's do a happened. project. And he's, he's like, like yeah, I'll we, charge you. He's, he's, <laughs> like, he's like, what do we do a project? And I was like, oh, I'll charge you. Yeah. 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 And what was the name of that song? Banger of emotion. <laughs> yeah, a quick release. Exactly. Yeah, quick release. In parentheses, quick yeah. release. Yeah. <laughs> Emotional banger. I did not cue the correct Van Session song for this episode. Oh, no. It is not. 
<laughs> does not follow the theme, but that's okay. <laughs> that's we'll work funny. on that later. Uh, the song's called I.O. But yeah, yeah, the song's yeah, called yeah. I.O. I.O., okay. And it's okay. just, uh, it's and like the, the cool thing about it was that I, I knew that this was going to be just <laughs> death to Corey's voice. And like it's just because he's just screaming through, and I was like, "We're yeah." Corey does interesting things with his voice, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, that guy. I was like, "We're gonna get." I was like, "We're gonna get two. Like I knew before you walked in the room. I was like, "We're gonna get two, maybe, maybe three. three takes." Yeah. Well, th- historically, this is a song that I don't play a whole lot because it wrecks my voice. Mm. Um, and it's and it's 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 an is it always, like an end of nighter kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If if you can, yeah. Why if you just whip out a little for him right now. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> But I scream at the top of my lungs. So the yeah. the, the, the idea of this song is, is, is this female wouldn't leave my head, and it had been ten fucking years, like you know, and I was just like, get out of my head. And so I uh, I kept having these dreams. I kept having these dreams, and she would re- revisit, and she's someone I had dated previously, and uh, I needed to get rid of it. And I I woke up one morning, and I had had another one of those dreams, and I w- and it had been almost two years. I thought I thought it was done. I thought it was over, mm. and I was so infuriated. I grabbed my guitar. I walked into the bathroom <laughs> where I primarily so, so write writing. a lot of yeah. yeah. The, the acoustics yeah. are perfect, Great right? Reverb in yeah, there, yeah, exactly. And and I finished the song in 15 minutes. Walked out and mm. have never had a dream repeat dream. So I kind of like exercised a demon. Mm. So it was yeah. this very. It starts out very mellow, and then I just scream at the top of my lungs. So. I want to say you did that on band sessions. I, I might have. I yes. No. I did. I remember the story. I did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I did do that mm. one. Yes. And it's just so good. Yeah. Like, it's just ridiculous. That's one I edited, so... <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I didn't sound that good. Don't go back and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, even the one you posted on Facebook was like... Like cell phone just, footage from, yeah, it was from cell the phone crowd. Footage. Yeah, exactly. And I was just like, oh, I got I want to hear this yeah. in the mm. studio. Yeah. Mm. And so Corey came up and did that, and mm-hmm. and like, and, and we're what are we? Eighteen months. Later? Are you bros? Like, what are you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, we're in yeah. the band now, yeah. bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're playing the CD release or the album release. Like, I hate that I say the word CD. CD album release. CD show. release yeah. show. It's no more CD. So so I, Corey is very creative. Scott, what challenges did you face recording Corey in the studio? And how did you overcome? Because I I've seen some of your posts, like when you do when you have to do this, because you're you know like different things that you normally wouldn't do when recording somebody. Um, so the first it was the the very first thing that happened was I put like I, I, a lot of times I'll do like a mic shootout if we're gonna, gonna do, a, do a large project I'll I'll just throw a bunch of mics up and we'll just test them out. And with Corey, I thought this was going to be like a one-off thing. And so like, yeah. I just, I just grabbed like a go-to microphone mm-hmm. for his vocal and put it on there. And Corey's voice is very high. Mm-hmm. And like, I heard him sing like one word that was like, Nope, that is not going to work at all. Like, so the very first thing was like trying to find the right mic for his voice. And then the other thing, I can is, just see every musician. Cause I tell mm-hmm. musicians now on band sessions, if you have a mic, you prefer vocal mic, you prefer yeah. bring it because it, I feel like people, yeah. singers fall in love with them but they ought to they ought to be just like a shirt or something you wear that says what mike yeah sing. exactly <laughs> I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm the sm58 yeah. Yeah. i used to i used to have that sure 55 yeah on. yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Sound music yeah. shirt that's yeah. my that was my microphone yeah. For a long time. um yeah but then uh, the other thing about uh recording Corey is that his guitar is weird <laughs> so like he plays an acoustic guitar with an, electric, with an electric guitar pick. It plays a little tiny parlor. That looks like a ukulele. But both, it, both but, on a, but on a very small man, it makes me look like normal size. <laughs> yeah. like, if you played a mandolin, if you play a mandolin, you'd look like a giant. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, so he plays a, a very small guitar with an electric pickup in it into a pedal board full of effects, into an amplifier that he's using for distortion. Mm-hmm. And through a phone call to me right exactly <laughs> right yeah. which yeah. then which, which well, like what does three buttons do on your headphones uh, scott is that you know what they, it yeah. calls your the, the third one calls your axe yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um but uh but so like trying to figure out how to get um th- the guitar sound that Corey wants out of that setup because you can't fun. record the amp right you we, well go. that's the thing so initially we took a line out of his pedal board i bought a piece i bought a piece of gear that would let me split everything we took one line out of his pedal board and took it into the, into the recording and 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 then i mic'd up his amp mm. 
And we wound up just not ever using the, the the direct. We wound up just going straight with the amp. So, so it's so every track is like mic'd exactly the same way with the same two microphones. So you know that big long um, hallway outside our studio. Yeah. If you had walked in there during recording, you'd see an amplifier sitting yeah. in the middle of that hallway. Two microphones, with a couple yeah. microphones just, on it, and just cranked. And mm -hmm. yeah, and that's all you'd hear was a, it was his guitar part because yeah. he was in the other room. Yeah. And it's just such a like it out in the hallway. Yeah, yeah and the, it it's a it like it's. It's an uncommon sound. I don't know how else to put it. Like yeah. it, like it just it does it doesn't sound weird. It's just like it's mine. It's, it's unique. It's yeah. very it's, unique. It's, nobody else sounds yeah, like. And this. I don't yeah. know how. Like how, man, the story of how you got there, you know, yeah. was, was <clears throat> wild. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, in the end, like I got really bored of acoustic, you know, classic acoustic <laughs> guitar sound, yeah. uh, and then I started I, uh, an artist that I really like, uh, John Butler. He plays his acoustic through an amp, and so at some point in time, I'm like, oh, I'd like to do that. And I'm like, ah, not enough crunch, ah, not enough delay. Not, <laughs> and and the amps don't have all that, so then I just built a pedal board, right. you know, mm -hmm. piece by piece, you know. And oh no, not this one, uh, you know. And you throw in one in the basket, and you know, hopefully it'll recycle someday with some other your musician friends. You know, you say, hey, there's my basket of pedals. Right. Take take what you right. want. <laughs> uh, but like, and you kind of find the right mix, and so I finally kind of yeah. found that right mix, and and it was. It was slowly but surely. I toured with a guy uh, who's one of my musical heroes, Sean Hayes, who does um, has a similar, not a similar, but he he has his own sound. And when we toured with him, I, I remember thinking, "That's what I'm missing." Right. Is is I, I keep doing kind of classical sounding, you know, like nor yeah. normal and a normal guitar, and a, you know, and I was like, "I got to figure something out." How so. soon? So the first time I realized this was a thing was when I watched like a behind the scenes of uh, it was. The lead singer of Social Social Distortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me his name. I can't. I can't remember why I'm blanking on his name. Couldn't tell you either. But he's got a very unique guitar sound, right? Yeah. He uses a specific guitar through a specific amp, and it's a specific yeah. sound or whatever. Yeah. And um, and I'm and that is noticeable. Like from the when you hear it, you know it's oh that's Social Distortion. Yeah. And at, at what point? Because I don't. I'm not a musician. I've I've I play like an acoustic guitar a little. I knew a few a few chords. Same. So how does, so how, <laughs> at what point do you finally like, okay, now that I'm done learning the chords and the basics and I'm covering enough songs that do you start diving into like your own sound? Oh man. It's, it's, it's a journey. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's ever, you know, like something yeah. you're going after, but like, even as your musical tastes change and I, I, I know, uh, you know, like I said, I toured with Sean and I remember going like, oh, he's got such an awesome guitar tone. And I was just like what's mine you know mm -hmm. and um and i think it, it it evolves you know as you as you're writing songs you know you you kind of start mimicking your your heroes and then you start finding your own voice in in, in songwriting and 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 that and and then i think you at some along that journey of like finding your own voice in songwriting then you start finding your own sounds and your sonically you know and and, and how you want things you know produced how you want them to sound so, yeah. yeah and the like the, the funny thing is you and i uh, were at opposite ends of the same journey yeah like because i started playing an acoustic guitar through an effects pedal board into an amplifier uh -huh. like playing like the solo for comfortably numb on yeah a, on a like a, an acoustic guitar yeah you know but like with distortion and delay and all yeah. that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah and like when i was in college my rig was like ridiculously complicated yeah. like two speakers yeah. one for the acoustic side and, and i started the exact side. same op the opposite way right i was straight up right and, and di right yeah. and, and now yeah like if i go play a solo show i show up with a guitar and a tuner yeah and that's it mm -hmm. like there's nothing else like yeah. and my rig for the proper way like it looks really complicated but it's really just two preamps mm. and and a couple of tuners and that's it yeah and so it's like it's like it's really funny like i started like yeah. trying to make this acoustic guitar and we've gone the other, other way. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's the Billy Strings problem. Yeah, right? I mean, like, yeah. It, except like no one else on earth was willing to put the time in that Billy Strings did to get that, to get the guitar that, to sound yeah, that perfect like that. Yeah, uh, Mike Ness is the lead singer of. There you go. Distortion. Perfect. Wasn't Jay he? Wasn't he in the Monkees? <laughs> no. Oh, oh Miss Smith. Uh, oh. That's right. I still hung up on, on Sean Hayes. It was Will and Grace was his show that he. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, Sean right, gets the that all the time. time. I was trying to like, which one was that? <laughs> I love Sean Hayes. It's Will and Grace was great. Yeah. Oh the fact God, you're friends great. with him is amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he's very good. Yeah. He's super talented. <laughs> Shane, Shane do, you, do you follow the same journey with your keys, or this is not a problem with the keys? This is just uh, no. I would say I definitely. I've, oh, I've, I've honed in on a key sound for okay. sure there's one Rhodes piano that is my go-to Rhodes and on, on a grittier song I may put an amp simulator on it or something like that 
just to kind of gravel it up a bit. But for the most part, is I'm just playing that same street roads. Sometimes we'll reamp it, like we'll record my track directly into the board and then reamp it through one of the good amps, you know, in the studio, and get kind of a more, you know, different sound out of it. But yeah. yeah. I, I, I've got thousands of voices on that rolling keyboard I can choose from, and I'm I, there's two I use: a regular piano and a one certain Rhodes that I have to navigate down to and get to every time. And you <laughs> agonized over that keyboard too, though. Like that was a that, yeah. like that was not like an impulse buy. I mean, that's yeah. expensive. I studied piano. it out for piano. a long time. But like, like I remember Shane like going on and on about like the low end, like the keys on the low end feel like you're hitting a bigger string than the, hmm. yeah. like there was some, like the, there was, he, he went on and on. I go it. through phases. I've played, I've had my phaser stage and I've had, oh, my, the phaser you know, stage was great. Yeah. I was trying to uh, do funky things with the keyboard. That's yeah. in one of your yeah. songs. I realized I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah in fact, I <laughs> yeah. think there's a phaser yeah, in one of yours. Totally. Yeah. Circle around. Yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll play with some things down there, but when it's me doing or the proper way, I kind of have like, yeah, my set sound that I use. You don't All right. So I got a, I got a question for everybody and you, and it spurred off. You said, uh, voices in, in, in gravel. Right. So I thought of your voice, obviously. Mm. And so, uh, I'll start with Brandon and we'll kind of work our way around. What are your, what's your thoughts? What's your journey on the, on the sound of your own voice? Like hearing oh, man. your own voice, right? Like how, has that evolved? Uh, which direction is it going? As it is, well, I'm really excited to answer this. What do you What do you think yeah. of your own voice? The because I can't voice. sing for shit. So <laughs> same. No, same. I'm not talking about the singing voice. Yeah. So yeah, because we're podcasters, right? Yeah. Now. I hear your voice right. all the fucking time. But what happened? Yeah. I, I I edit my own voice every day. Yeah. But what happened was in junior high. We're let's go back a little. Oh yeah, let's hear the journey. In, in junior high, a friend of mine was like, "Hey." All the girls are in choir. You got you got to try out for choir. I'm like, well, I don't I don't sing. I don't I don't know how to sing. And he convinced me to go audition for choir class in junior high, and I my voice had dropped. So that was you're just in. Like you can't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. You're just in in junior right. high. You got the the <laughs> bass. You we need bass. bass. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I everybody sing. else's voices are all super high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I would go to the, all the performances and sing like this. <laughs> you gonna insert that later? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just and then afterwards you'd get, oh, you sounded so good, you yeah. know. And I'm like, I know, I know, you know. I, by I, subtraction. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I've stayed <laughs> the proper way this long, dude. I just kind of tuck <laughs> in there and pretend it. I'm singing. Let these guys like, yeah. you guys' harmonies oh. are so good. I'm like, yeah, I'm just mouthing yeah. all my. And then Todd and I start a, a college radio show in 2010, and and uh, didn't. I, we didn't really hear our voice because it was podcast, but you don't really edit it. We just you just quick edit it, quick, quick threw it up as a podcast. Plus, I never listened to this thing. No, <laughs> that's so funny. Todd never listens. He's just he's like, dude, I was there. Why did I? I'm like, I know. I have to go back and edit and listen every now and again. Every now every now and, and again, he's, he'll go back. And then uh, we got invited to do emceeing, and that's yeah. when that's when people would come up to me and say things like, "You did a great job," or "Really, <coughs> your set, your voice, whatever." I'm like. That's the weirdest compliment. Like I never knew that. I'm in my mid thirties before I realized that I sounded good on a live mic. I guess and not everyone that. does. Yeah, not everyone don't. done. Yeah, my I, voice does not no work idea. for that. Yeah, really? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's too nasally and mid rangey. But you can sing. Sure. Yeah, I can't. I can't sing. I can't carry a tune. Which is <laughs> isn't that wild? Well, that's okay. best for all of us. It's really God. it's really funny though. Like yeah. you're talking about. Uh, like people don't like to hear their voices recorded because we hear when we talk and when we sing most of what we're hearing is bone conduction so our uh like we're not hearing it through our ears we're hearing it through our skull you know and Who so invited the nerd and so <laughs> <laughs> this is how he got to his voice all right, all right professor keep going yeah exactly <laughs> and so like as a result our voices when we hear them recorded they're much higher and more nasally than we think they are okay because we think we yeah. we think our voices are deeper because we right. hear it through bone right. conduction right. and so but like somebody like you or somebody like us like, like listen to our voices all the time mm -hmm. like like i know people who just never get used to that mm. you know so but um but like talking about like coming to terms with your voice or whatever um until i was probably in my mid-20s late 20 mid-20s i just wanted to sound like james taylor like everything I, yeah. like everything I did, I just wanted to sing like James. It sounded like James Taylor singing it, and like every every single thing, like just I would do my best James Taylor impersonation. Mm. And at some point, 
uh, in maybe in grad school or like in the interim before I like I took ten years off when I moved here. Um, I got comfortable with my with my own singing voice, mm-hmm. and you know, and and so like and even like my college roommate. I released a, a, a record a while back, and my college roommate, um, it had a James Taylor song on it, and my college roommate uh, texted me, and he was like, a younger you would not have sung it that way, is the way yeah, you put it. Yeah, like, yeah. You would not have, you would have, yeah. you would have been much closer. You'd You're have, so you'd, mature now. You would have yeah. viewed much closer to the original, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shane, how many hours in strip clubs did, were you? Did you... <laughs> Welcome to the stage, <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine. <laughs> To, to get that vo- vocal down just right, yeah. Chastity. Chastity. <laughs> Gentlemen, put those dollar bills together. Welcome to the main stage, Chastity. Jasmine, you're on deck. Jasmine, you're on deck. I like that she's on deck. It's so great. Because <laughs> the voice changes when you go from gentleman to like, Jasmine, you're on deck. Yeah. Like, only Jasmine has to hear that part. She needs to know. Yeah. Jasmine, get ready. Yeah. 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 That's a Focus throwback Jasmine. to some of our old oh, strip club. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, when, when did you... Because you, I think you told us before that you weren't really singing. You were singing on your porch, and the neighbor was like, "Hey, yeah, you yeah." Know. Kim was my neighbor. Yeah, Kim Bouchard. Was like yeah. you should do this. And so, did you sing before that, or how old were you when you liked your voice? This is a great question, Todd. By I way. never liked my voice. I oh. when I was a little kid, I I I my vocal cords got operated on when I was in third grade because I had like a polyp, like a growth on my vocal cords, and I talked like a muppet. I had this little raspy voice. That was, I, I, you know. <laughs> so they, they went and they chopped it off and I couldn't talk for like six weeks or something like that while my vocal cords healed and stuff and heaven yeah i know right (laughs) can you imagine six weeks of silence out of me i actually cannot (laughs) and i never i never was crazy about my voice and um i i think it's more about microphones for me too like ask scott there we have a folder in our studio of (laughs) 20 something recordings of me and he's always like you should get it you should do your solo thing do a solo ep do a solo and i'm just i've always said no 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 i no, i've never said no but i'm like yeah maybe <laughs> well, scott were scott and i were talking before well and see then he, he, he you get around a guy that has you know three thousand dollar microphone <laughs> right 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 <laughs> yeah and, right. and 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 not all of them work and that's what i learned it's like <laughs> yeah. i sound i sound really terrible oh, on yeah. some mics oh, yeah. my yeah. voice sounds horrible on some mics and it's better on watch hmm. and then like in the last year he has purchased this mic which most of his record was recorded on okay and I started like just doing demos on it, and I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to do that solo thing. This mm-hmm. is finally the sound that I want my voice to have on a recording. So, here's what so. you don't know. Like, so <laughs> it's a, a couple of days ago. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was never. It was never the microphone. <laughs> so, so here's. So this is. I thought this was cool as hell. So like, um, what was it? What was it? Uh, was it? Sun Monday Sunday that we were three weeks early for the Sunday. Inter- yeah, we Sunday. were three weeks early for an interview. And <laughs> how does that work? You, you put it in the wrong date in the calendar. Okay, is what okay. And so we found ourselves with a whole lot of time in the studio. And so I just like threw some microphones up in front of Shane, and like we were just going. And we he recorded a couple of tunes, and I filmed one of them. And I did that surreptitiously to get a Final Cut Pro lesson out of Shane. And um, and then so we get the thing done, and. This is what he doesn't know is that I, I, we haven't released it yet. That video, I, I put it up on a forum that like Danny Weldon and oh, we're both on. Yeah, and all anybody is talking about is how much they love your voice. <laughs> all that's every single comment is just like that dude's voice is unique, man, and it's perfect for this song. Like, every single comment, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm. Well, and for me, it's honestly being around Scott and Carrie and people like Corey. You you start to realize it's like, oh, you got to step up your game a little bit. You can't just randomly just fling yeah. notes out there and be in the <laughs> yeah. neighborhood. You got to be on, you know. Yeah. And so I've I've gotten better being surrounded by better singers, and then I, the, with microphones, and I understand the recording process better. I understand a lot of it better now. And so it's you're yeah, very, it's very art- artistic with your music. Like you don't want to just do. Like you, you actually think about, it. and so that now that, that like you know, <laughs> as opposed to what, as oppo- unlike as opposed the rest to, of us, yeah. The rest of you. <laughs> These guys who just pull it yeah. out of their asses <laughs> on the fly. Totally, totally. I Which, think about my work. Thank God, yeah, because uh, yeah, no, you've mentioned that before, where it was like, um, you do you do it for. In other words, you're not a you're not something that you can just like snap and sing me a song. You you very you're very intentional about what you yeah. do, and I so go through a process. You go through a process, to, yeah. And then, I mean, you can just, yeah, <laughs> you guys are all the same. But that's, <laughs> but, that's <laughs> but but now, but now I'm glad you're f- 
finally li- liking your voice. This is good. Oh yeah, yeah, feels feels good. This is good. Yeah. Corey, uh, you also have this is great because Corey has a very unique yeah vocal as well. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like, <laughs> no, I, heard, I mean, like it's when, like, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I put that microphone up in front of you. I was like, nope, that is yeah. not gonna work. Yeah, I think I think the best way to d- describe it is um, we had cut an album back in the day, like 2011, uh, under the our the old moniker Corey Mon and the Starlight Gospel, and um, it's back when we had we had done some touring with JJ Graham Mofro and things were going really well for us. And so, so, so a friend of ours, the guy who had recorded it, uh, knew a handful of people and he was, he was touring, uh, as, as manager, you know, tour manager with a guy by the name of Mason Jennings, who's a fant- fantastic songwriter. And so he had passed the record along oh, man. to a manager and to a booking guy and was like hey these guys are i just recorded this record and i think they're great and this is how this is the lip what the label guy said <laughs> and i think oh. it, it sums it up as far as my voice oh, no. he goes oh, no. he goes oh shit this this dude's really unique he goes this is okay he's probably going to dwell in obscure in, in obscurity his whole career or He's gonna hit like Dave Matthews, and everyone's gonna pretend oh, to be him for yeah, the, you know yeah, for the next ten years, yeah. you know. And I, I think definitely that to me that was actually a real good reality check for me because I was like, yeah, that's probably my voice is that unique in that it it most people are gonna go, wow, that's kind of weird, you know, you know. Do you and, lean and, into that with your songwriting? I, yeah, I, I've learned to. Mm-hmm. I think I think I think in the I, when I discussed the mode of like at first you're just trying to you know Shane or sorry Scott talked about wanting to be you know, his hero, you know, for the first 10 years, you know, I wanted to be Ben Harper, you know, you know, know, or or Robert Plant for the first 10 years. And then, and you kind of find realize, Oh, I should probably be Corey, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it takes a long time to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a long time. So, um, yeah, I, I, I have learned thus, uh, you know, lately, uh, and, and within probably the last 10 years, I've, I've kind of leaned in more to, to my voice and been like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. It's weird and quirky in some ways, and I'll bring that out rather than hide it, you know? So, I think Shane, the, I think Scott, the uh, is Carly here? Do you want to invite her in? Shane, you might need to come sit by me, and yeah, then we'll, scoot over. we'll swap. Yeah. She just walked around the corner. You guys can okay. keep podcasting. Is that what we're doing? So yeah. what I was about to say, <laughs> what I was about to say is that like one of the coolest things, talking about like the specifics of voices and recording them and everything, um, Corey's voice exists in this specific, in a, like a like a frequency. Shane, range. you got a refill out there? Just <laughs> grab a yeah. All right, thanks. But like the speaking of that, nerd, here we go. The thing yeah. that I love about <laughs> Shane's voice is that he's got all this gravel on the low end of it. Like like you can hear it in like in my voice, like right now, like kind of a vocal fry kind of thing. But like he's got this when he sings, he's got this this beautiful gravel on the low end of his vocal and i just because you it. listen to it in your and when you listen to it in your ears while you're editing like you hear all yeah. the things yeah yeah and i just absolutely like love that Corey's voice on the other hand is I don't know, much more emotional i guess is the way to yeah. think about it very emotional like so like yeah. there's like if you listen to, to clock light like or I wish I was king. Oh, sorry, I wish I were king. Um, <laughs> we've been having this ongoing battle about the subjunctive mood in that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like Corey's voice breaks multiple times in performances, whether it's live or whether it's in the recordings, and and that's one of those things that like it's so honest and raw and like true. Like that, I want to capture that. Like that, that stuff's gorgeous. All right. Well, that's. Let's uh, Thank let's you. do it. <laughs> Thank you. A little clock light. Stephen walks the streets of Chicago. He's got a big smile on his face because there's no more reason to keep swallowing pills. Things have never felt so right. He's never looked so good. Even his friends, they call him Hollywood because he's surely on his way. It's all right to feel that more good, more good is on the way. It's all right to feel that more good, more good is on the way. To spend 
Then one more night Solitude Staring at this clock light He swears He's gonna lose His mind uh, Corey, that's Corey's. Rec- that is, is that the recording you captured, Scott? Is yeah. That the, that's, that's the, the video. That's yeah. the video. And yeah. and uh, now is that this is so Corey, t- t- talk to us about that song. Yeah, yeah. Um, that song uh, kind of came whew, a little bit out of left field w- w- when I wrote it. Uh, but <laughs> but but essentially, um, we had a little uh, whirly, a little whirlitzer around the band home. Yeah. Come on over here. Yeah. <laughs> Carly McKinnon. Carly, Carly McKinnon. Carly. Enter Carly. Yeah. Um, oh, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hey, look, I'm on a podcast. I'll just <laughs> show up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, we had a little whirly, and I, I started playing that piano part over and over and over again because I can't fucking play the piano. That, that, that Shane playing on, 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 the, on the record. Um <laughs> So I, I, I kind of wrote that part, and I, I you know, it was dwelling in uh, most definitely moments in my life where I was staring at the clock light where I couldn't go to bed, and I was feeling lonely because I was dealing with, you know, loss. Um, I, so in the end, I, I, I felt really the, the piano piece is actually quite happy and happy you know like and until you go into maybe that's all shane's fault yeah yeah, i know yeah (laughs) the original (laughs) recording is like yeah the original recording of that is shockingly different yeah most definitely yeah Yeah. he's Um, got drums yeah drums and everything (laughs) so anyways i I wrote i felt like you know i mean so many times in life you're moving on from something right and you're actually to the point where you don't really care about that Thing that you moved on for you know in your everyday life as you're stepping through life and you're making that those changes uh that you're very uh full of hope and you you know the changes you're, you've made are great things are going awesome and things but it doesn't mean that those moments at night you know when you're tired you're worn out you're fucking had it by the end of the day that the, the darkness settles yeah. in and and that's the the juxtaposition of that song is you've got you know the chorus they're the verses which are very much hey this person and i, I didn't want to sing about me you know until obviously the bridge uh right. but I, I didn't want to bring it into me like i i knew i had had so many conversations with friends who were dealing with the same thing you know and it's like yeah we're all moving forward we, we, we've we've put the past behind us and you kind of almost have to but it doesn't mean that in those dark moments that all of a sudden you're like shit i'm alone and this fucking yeah. sucks you know and that bridge so. that he's talking about though that's that's where his voice breaks like yeah and like it's probably what the last 45 seconds, yeah last 45 last minute or so yeah and like in the video like you can see him his arms get more animated as he sings and he just like gets in more and more emotional and shane can't look at him like shane's just shane kept his we head. call it full schroeder yeah. <laughs> um, when shane's <laughs> head goes all the way down um <laughs> Well, we, we, we like Not full, half and, and and no half, half Schroeder would be like like yeah. leaning down, which full is what Schroeder he was, is when he's like, he's like he was doing half Schroeder the take before that, and at some <laughs> point in time we locked eyes and we both look at each other like, <laughs> <laughs> but like that's but like the the tail end of that song is just here we go. She's gonna lose her mind. I have to spend one more night Solitude staring at this clock light And here it goes I swear I'm gonna lose my mind Shane, your head is down the entire yeah, time Yeah, the whole time Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch me fall Like, listen to his voice there the emotion. Feel my weight, you feel. Give me time to fall. Oh, I want to fall. Give me more me. You know, I know you. You want time, it's true. Time, it's true. Oh, and then right here, this is it. I move on. 
I move on. Yeah, I barely made it through that one. Yep. Yeah. I move on. And that one. Yep. <laughs> I move on. I couldn't look and at it. And then I had recovered by yeah. this time. Yeah. I move on. Yeah. I move. Did you feel Scott recording you at all? I tried. To- no, we had no idea. We had, oh, the yeah. video? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. No, we had no yeah. clue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously no the audio, but yeah. I mean the video. And then also, like, I would have hammed it up a little so, bit. Like, in, <laughs> like, like my yeah. hips. In, but like in productions like this, like where something's really intimate like that, I try to just like not even look. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm. Yeah, don't fuck it up, Scott. Serious? No, yeah. absolutely, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't fuck it up. It was yeah. a pretty emotional, like, <laughs> yeah. thing that was going on in there. Like, so. Scott, I had come in and laid it down on the studio, me playing with my elementary, you know, like piano playing. And Scott had said, no, (laughs) we need to do Shane. And so it was us recreating a song, like right right there. The the story I heard was Shane was thrown in Mm -hmm. to just create some keys. Shane, how'd you do that? (laughs) (laughs) No, I heard the part. I mean, I heard his part of it. And so I think Scott said there was probably nine takes that yeah, whole day in the studio. There were nine takes, and the first six is just me learning the song. So I'm yeah. just I'm I'm not even paying attention to what he's singing about. He hasn't told me the story about the song yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to plunk out the parts and get the basics of it down. And then I'm like, okay, I think we got it. First one, I, I probably screwed it up because that was probably what I did. Second <laughs> one was probably as good as that as the final take, except we we did we made we the mistake. locked like, eyes and got a and, little too emotional. And suddenly, and, I knew what this yeah. song was saying and what, and I was like, "This is heavy." And and we we accidentally glanced at each other, and then I screwed up right there. And I'm like, "Okay," and that's when I knew. I'm like, "Okay, head down." And you'll full see shoulder. me in yeah, full shoulder. Yeah, full shoulder. You'll see me a lot of times <laughs> in the studio with sunglasses on. I'm not trying to be a rock and roll star because my eyes are closed yeah, all the right. time. Yeah, right. No, really. It's, <laughs> it's embar- I wear I wear them like inside hey guys, and I'm stuff. your piano player. <laughs> Do you yeah. need to wear those gloves, though? Yeah, the gloves, <laughs> rock the gloves are a pure affect, yeah. for sure, an affectation. <laughs> no, but yeah, like I, when I, I, if I'm feeling a song that much, I have to like stay with that feeling and not get distracted by anything else. So I had no idea Scott was rolling anything yeah. on that other than the audio recording. I have a little like Apple stool, Apple Store stool that's like right next to my little station, and I just like, just like. Yeah, he did that to yeah. me on Sunday when I, I did the same thing to him on about. Sunday. I was like, I just and I had sunglasses on with no hat. I looked like an idiot because I had my headphones. It looks on. and it sounds so good. It's uh, <laughs> I look ridiculous, but it, yeah. Corey, um, is this the last song in this album, or how, how, what does this thing look like? Because you're. It is not the last song on the yeah. album. As, okay. I, I, I thought about it. It, it, it made yeah. sense to, to, to end with this one, but th- we're actually ending with a cute little number that I did with my daughter. It's adorable. It, yeah. Oh, um, hell yeah. In, in the end, um, it's a very emotional album in general, but I wanted to end on me and her. Because mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the album in some ways documents loss you know and handling it and therapy and you know like meaning my own personal therapy uh because that's kind of what music is to me um but i wanted to end on this just hey life is fantastic as long as i got this little thing by my side you know so and you're a wonderful dad Thank i you. love seeing your posts <laughs> makes me happy makes me feel like i need to be a better dad myself um yeah how has that affected your music oh my hell um, God, how many songs do you have about her now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's affected my life exponentially. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like December 1, 2020 is, is, it spells it out perfectly. But like in the end, um, I think we're almost wired or at least society wires us to like want a partner and, and want this love and want this romantic whatever, you know. And, um, and that's been a challenge for me in my whole life. Uh, and 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 some of these songs are you know the loss of that or or, or the, the romance of that and it not working out you know um, but in the end December one twenty twenty on the album is this song where I, I I'm first I, I it was a therapy the whole song was therapy and the first uh, verse is like hey fuck you you wanted perfect you know to, to my ex you know and like and and then the second verse is like oh but we had good times you know like and it was literally happening as i was working this out i wasn't trying to fashion this this song i was little i didn't think the song would end up recorded it was just me processing right mm-hmm. and so the first one was like fuck you the second one is you know like you anyways and the second one is like oh but we had some good times and we were great and then and and but the whole the, the chorus is each time is i'm so alone i'm so alone and then the third, I was like, how do you even finish a song like this? You know? And 
it hit me and I started bawling and I bawled for like 10 minutes before I wrote the third verse. But the third verse was like, dude, you had a child and you're not alone. Like she's the best thing ever. And, um, I was like, Oh fuck. You know? Oh. And then I felt fantastic. Yeah. After writing the song. So yeah, that's how it's changed. Not only my music, but my life. Like I have this little girl and she's the sweetest, kindest, nicest, you know, like I am so lucky, you know, cause I hang out with some other people's kids. Well, you're <laughs> <the> dad, <so>. Jeez. <laughs> and one of the other, one of the cool things, they're all is assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some I really like, and there's some I don't. <laughs> you know, uh, but. one of the one of the cool things is that he would, uh, she was probably there for a, a third of the recording. Yeah, probably. yeah. And so like, th- and like she's just delightful to have around the studio. And then also having an eight or a nine year old child puts a hard ceiling on your session. <laughs> yeah, right at about two hours. Yeah, maybe three. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, there's going to come a time like in the session where the child gets bored or gets hungry or whatever, and so. Uh, we encourage everybody now to bring bring their children. <laughs> yeah, Carly, yeah. <laughs> Carly in there doing. Uh, yeah. um, but like it was like, but she wasn't just like there playing on an iPad. Like she's in the songs. Mm. Like uh, what's the song that begins? Circle with, round. Circle round begins with the sound of. She didn't know we were tracking, and she'd gotten some candy out of the candy jar and put the lid back on. Mm. And so circle round begins with the sound of the candy jar lid being closed. Mm. She she closed it and she looked at me and goes. <laughs> like that, and, my, and then and then we just rolled with it, and we're like, "That's it, that's the yeah, that's it." That's and that it. was the yeah, take. You keep that, yeah. yeah and then the like, and then in circle round, like we have all these like crazy like this project has been has taken me really way far out of my wheelhouse because like with the proper way, it's usually just like you know three. It's it's like eight tracks most, and like some of these with Corey have fifty plus tracks because I've built these like massive. You're talking deep, like or like stacked, num- number right? of number of tracks. So yeah. like the last proper way album, uh, I think we we never had more than f- probably five or six tracks, mm-hmm. um, three vocals and two instruments. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but with Corey's, I'm, I'm a lot of times I've built Corey's these, deep, man. I've built I built these crazy like you got a lot to cover up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I built these like so I built these like. Could you close sounds- that jar louder? Yeah, yeah. yeah, please, please. Yeah, just do it through the whole song. The song sucks. <laughs> but there's a, so there's a lot of like vocal. There's a lot of vocal stuff going on. And there's a lot of like soundscape stuff going on in several of the songs, and like so they're like in circle round. Like there's all these like. Like these demonic sounding voices floating around, and they're panning around in your in your head as people are like circle round, you know. And I've got the like sh- pitch shifter so that they're like two octaves lower than they actually are. So it just it sounds like Satan is speaking in your ear. <laughs> and then in the middle of it, it's his eight year old little girl is like circle round, mm. and it's just and it's mm. just like oh, this is, the contrast is so stark. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you know, she's like it's there's she's. She was gonna do the chorus of a a tune called Stevie Nicks, and, and then like we start rolling, and she knew every word, mm. so we just kept tracking. Yeah, and so like so there's a version of one of his songs that has her singing the entire take, mm. and then there's this uh, what's it called gonna You're gonna keep on stealing gonna keep on stealing yeah um, that like Corey just rolled in, we stuck a microphone in front of her and stuck a couple of mics in front of him. He said he wanted it to sound very different than the rest of the record, so we used very different gear. And um, you teaching a lesson to your kids with that song, or and, it is, <laughs> and it's this adorable little song. few, it's few lessons, yeah. Song. yeah. It's this great song, and like I've got a, I think I don't know if I sent you the picture. I've got a picture of you guys, like, just, oh, do you? Yeah, that's awesome. Because Corey, Corey oh, no. just grabbed because he plays these weird guitars. He just grabbed like a, a regular size guitar that we have in the studio. Yeah, it made me look you like a very thing? small man. A yeah, I was guitar. I was like Tom from Tom and Jerry or Jerry from Tom and Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Holding the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying mandolin, man. Yeah, you want yeah. a mandolin. All right. Um but like, you know, it's just so she's she's baked into the record in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. which is really great. Uh Carly, welcome to the program. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Hello. Uh, so we were we started this. Todd started this conversation off. It was based off of um, your your voice, your vocals, and what? when, when you in general, in general, oh, yep, 
Everyone's voice. Okay. Everyone's voice. Um, when did you? What was the question? Like, when did you? Yeah, just kind of come into like, terms when did you get, with the when sound. Did you get of your comfortable voice. with the sound of your voice. Yeah, when did you get comfortable with the sound? And how has that evolved by choice or by? Yeah. Who did you try to sound like at first, and yeah. then you eventually moved away and started sounding like yourself? As a Regina musician, Spector was Regina Spector. My first. Oh really? Oh, that was yeah. a fast, okay. easy answer. Okay. Yeah, she was my first inspiration. Well, uh, maybe Karen Carpenter. Oh, those are two. Good I think Carrie Carpenter is probably my first. She was my first female singer that I fell in love with when I was like eight years old. Are you a drummer mm-hmm. too? I wish. <laughs> She's I'm a not. Badass drummer. She's such a badass drummer. She's amazing. Um, Regina Spector. I think I found my own voice like two years ago. Yeah. The follow up question yeah. is: How did you then take your hero's voice and then form it into and find your own? Oh. That's a tricky question. Yeah, that's why we ask. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a tricky question to just spring on me. Um, I think it's when you stop caring. Oh, ah, interesting. That's for me. I just stopped caring because um, I spent my whole life caring having to be somebody else. Okay. So yeah. I spent my whole life having to be the good little girl, and then I had to be the good wife, and then I had to be the good. I had to be these things, and all of a sudden I was just me. And that's when I could belt, and that's when I could sing, and that's when I was found myself. So, yeah, when I found myself, I found my voice. And you're mm-hmm. face tattoos next, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna start with teardrops. Oh, <laughs> I'll start with the teardrop. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have like a big one that comes around. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> a big Mike anyway. Tyson tribe. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would fit my look. There you go. Yeah, it fits me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't oh. think so. But that's all right. Yeah. This is Ogden. You you are required to have like a big giant chest tattoo. Yeah. And not wear a shirt. <laughs> and, and oh well. And, I'll. Well, that, <laughs> why that, am I still that got awkward really fast. <laughs> Scott's got the shirtless people of Ogden thing I going do, on. I do, yeah. yeah. What? I don't know. Yeah. So, um, one of my running jokes is that it, your day in Ogden is not complete until you've seen your shirtless man. Um, oh. And 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 people exercising or people doing yard work do not count. Okay. Um, mm. But there will be a random dude walking down Harrison Boulevard with no shirt. I'm and like, like 35 degree it. weather. Yeah, so, and like yeah. It, and it's Any you're, time of year. Yeah. And so I I bought the web domain shirts for Ogden cuz I, <laughs> I wanted to He's start, just trying to help out. I wanted to start a charity. I would get just have shirts to hand out to the yep, shirtless men. Exactly. Nobody wants to see that. Mm. Yeah. Ain't nobody need to see that. Nobody. <laughs> now is that a spin off of the what it was it the left-handed gloves? Website. Oh, it was, cri- cri- it was yeah. Cripple Exchange. Cripple Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> cripple Exchange, yeah. which oh, it's almost sounds like, like that a Yeah, Cripple bit, Exchange bit was like, I want to, I, I still have Cripple Exchange. Yeah. And it is, for, it, it's, it's going to be, when I'm done with it, it's going to be for people who are missing parts that come in pairs, where like, if I buy a pair of gloves, I have a huge pile of left gloves. That are really good shape. And brand new. And what brand I need, new. Yeah. and what I need is a friend who's missing his right hand, and we can just trade gloves. God, I love it. And like the same go, go oh. same for shoes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, Corey, <laughs> so, <laughs> let's let's go just a little further. <laughs> You want, you want to dive deep on that? Yeah. No. I, can we really dive there? Yeah. That, that, that's what this podcast really needs right now. <laughs> We've been looking for a title oh, for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, by uh, the way, we're putting a record out with Corey. That's, thank you. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the title of the record is Quick Release. Corey, do you want to talk about that? I, I, I'd rather talk about Scott's hand here for a minute or lack thereof. <laughs> more specifically <laughs> uh, but really like how's he that good in music right like you guys fantastic you know he can play anything and he's got one hand I'm so. not the piano yeah <laughs> well overcomplicated i've seen you you no, <laughs> shut up P- you piano is on our record where you played it that is true yeah <laughs> right so and by our record, I, I, I mean my record. Wait, that what? You record, yeah. Made. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't there. Remember, you were like, hey, the other guy, he he can't quite pull this off, but but this, my my stub in this hand this, can pull it this off. This requires two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, record coming. Yeah, I forgot that there was, I forgot I did play, yeah. I did play some keyboards. Yeah, you did. See? Pit, pitch the record. It, I mean, God, this is one track uh, at a time. Yeah, right? we're excited. Uh, it's March 30th. Uh, we're going to... Big uh, release show. Yeah, we're doing a that. release show at the State Room in Salt Lake City, and we're going to release the record the same day. So uh, we're excited about it. I 
of course, there's nobody else that uh, would open than the proper way, and uh, they're going to open and kick our asses and make us look like fools the second we go on. But how we're going to how we're going to transition from really amazing to I don't know about these guys um, <laughs> is we're going to start with the proper way, and then the proper way is going to join Corey, and people are going to be like, oh yeah, this is still pretty good. Oh, this yeah. is still pretty. Yeah. It's okay, other than yeah. the singer, yeah, I like right? This transition, and, and yeah. then we're going to slowly bring on my and his debauchery from there. You know, my band, and and once the proper way steps off it's like oh yeah why did we come yeah <laughs> and the proper way is gonna feign disgust and just march off the stage. yeah exactly hey i just had a thought <laughs> what what if i continued to play bass with your band yeah after the and yeah we double two, bass we had two double we could just bass. do we could, we, we could totally just spinal tap it yeah double bass it's big bottom yeah it's a, <laughs> there is actually double bass parts on one song so we, you should totally oh, play that one. yeah yeah that's amazing <laughs> and we have we have carly's uh bands uh Van sessions coming out soon too, so I think is that I think it's next week because they were the first. Don't look up at me. On. No, I, I'm, I just well, mix them. You just mix them. Yeah, he, he. I don't know if he goes in order or not, but how fun was that? Van sessions. Oh my goodness! I thanks had, for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. I, I had to pitch myself for like a solid six months. That's Todd. Don't look at me. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I had I had to come talk to Todd multiple he, times. He's tough. I can I can I can agree with you. Everybody, he's a tough. Want, everybody wants a piece of Todd, so. You I had to, I had to pitch do. myself a few I times. I have to field all the Instagram requests, and I'm like, oh, God, Todd at thebandycollective.com is where you need to be. So. We can close out the show right now. <laughs> 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 yeah. And on that yeah. note, closing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but, but it was question. good. It, I no. had so yeah, much fun, good. and right. I messed fun. up so many times, but I had a I great, saw you said so that somewhere. Where I didn't hear one mess up. Did you hear the mess ups? No, no, don't admit it. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I did perfect, and did I am perfect. amazing, and yes. everyone's gonna love yes. it. Thank you. It, the good ones mess up, but nobody else know they mess nobody up. Nobody right? knows. Yeah. Nobody knows. I also put a ton of auto tune on Carl. <laughs> <laughs> like, sounds really robotic. <laughs> <laughs> like, like really going for the T pain. Yeah, yeah. T pain. Yeah. yeah, I heard a little reverb on. There's, oh, there's what? a shit ton of reverb on every one of those. On every one of those? Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that room is huge. Yeah. yeah. It's like a big cavernous <laughs> space. Todd, did you have any arts news? Thanks, everyone, for joining us, by the way. This is a fantastic gathering. Scott, I blame you because I invited Scott on the program as a professor just to talk about you know English lit literature, and we got none of it. <laughs> I overruled we that. Got- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to talk about prostitution in the 19th century if if you want. See, to. Yes, like we can yeah, we can do that. That's where I was hoping to go, and we got none of it, and that's okay. So, uh, yeah, Todd with arts news, I guess. Any? Uh, just a quick update. Uh, my gallery down Salt Lake Finch Lane Gallery. Uh, one more week. Uh, so Friday's the last day for my 35 by 35 show. It's 35 artists under 35 years old. There's an online publication called Artists of Utah 15 Bytes that puts it together and. Uh, Anyway, great show. So come check us out. Cool. And then we got a two week gap, and then uh, you'll hear all about my next show. So sounds good. We got van sessions coming up in next weekend. Shane, you had some bloggers in town. I saw up at Basin, and everything looked like it went well because they hit like the perfect weekend. Oh yeah, yeah. Every weekend, pretty lucky when we get when we get those weather windows like that. I've, I went up skiing all the like earlier in the week and uh yeah you couldn't see anything it was typical low vis you know flat light day at snow basin but yeah it's always nice when the journalists and the influencers and the bloggers come in when it's perfect weather and then they yeah. just make everyone feel like it's always like that so. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes okay well we shall close out the show with some van sessions i want to say thank you to banning one for powering today's episode of ogden arts and adventure show listen and subscribe to ogden arts and adventure on youtube like we're on facebook Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And if you want to be on this show, DM uh, Ogden Adventure, because that's me. If you want to be on Van Sessions, email Todd at thebandingcollective.com. That is Todd. This is Disconnect. Um, Fun little gig. And this is the first time, sad to say, that the band reached out to me and was like... so sad. So we broke up. Um... Like within two weeks after van sessions, and they're not together anymore, and they've got this cool vibe about them. But so, I guess Jaco is going to keep doing something. But whatever, they're they're not a band anymore. This is disconnect as recorded on van sessions. See you on the next Ogden Arts and Adventure show. Hot
lights are out from New York to LA. I had to melt the diamond ore to find one got away. Why let impatience some of you has to know what he can't chew. Sincerity for her now Rabbit's foot won't even do Half a million hearts are out From New York to L.A. I had to melt the diamond off To find one got away Half a million hearts it out From New York to L.A. I repair what's too drawn out To make my baby stay Give up faith, up, surrender, bender. Sometimes it takes a week or two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Half a million hearts are out from New York to LA. I had to melt the diamond ore to find one got away. Half a million hearts it out from New York to LA. I'll repair what's too drawn out to make my baby stay. Half a million hearts are out from New York to LA. I had to melt the diamond ore to find one got away. Half a million hearts it out from New York to LA. I'll repair what's too drawn out to make my baby stay. White lips impatient, some of you has to know he can't chew. Well, I showed sincerity for her now. Rabbit's fur won't even do. Oh, oh. Half a million hearts are out from New York to LA. I had to melt the diamond or the fire won't got away. A million hearts it out from New York to LA. I'll repair what's too drawn out to make my baby stay. Half a million hearts it out from New York to LA. I had to melt the diamond or the fire won't got away. Half a million hearts it out from New York to LA. Thank you. Finer keepers.